Another Sunday, which means another Arkansas football recruiting report. That's Otis Kirk. I'm Jacob Morris. And Otis, we'll get to the recruiting, but I think what's on everybody's mind is Arkansas and the loss. Yesterday on the road at Stillwater, 39-31 in double overtime. Brutal in every possible way. Arkansas flashed really well. Arkansas also flashed really poorly. What were your big takeaways from, I, I mean, just one of the more brutal losses I can remember for anybody, any game that I was at? Arkansas should have won that game, and it probably should have won it by two or three touchdowns. Oh, my goodness. I had, I had them by two touchdowns, you know, <laughs> and I really feel like it was justified. I mean, I thought going in, I told you last Sunday, Arkansas, I picked Arkansas up at two, and I, two, touch, two touchdowns, and I really believe that, Jake. It wasn't yeah. like a home pick or anything. I, 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 I just think Arkansas has got a really good team this year. But in my Friday story, before it, when I was in Tulsa, I wrote, Five keys to beating Oklahoma State. One of them was to eliminate pen- turnovers and penalties. And and you know I could have put I could have put one key and left it at that. You know if Arkansas had just done that, forget the other stuff. If mm-hmm. they had just eliminated the turnovers and penalties, they would have won that game and won it easily. Uh, they Sam's got to figure this thing out. I mean, yeah. it's, look, I don't think it was so much tactical areas. But, Errors by Sam that they got beat. You, I guess if it's tw- when they're 21 21, I believe it was, and they chose to go for fourth and four, fourth and five instead of take a field goal. But with the field goal kicker struggling, I didn't really question that. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't think there's really anything Sam did, but I, the, the pick six, the drop, the, the drop punt and, uh, fumble punt and then the two uh, the other fumble but Quinton you just cannot have that Jacob and this team this is a good football team but they're not going to win if they don't stop beating themselves and that's what happened yesterday Arkansas went to the number 16 team in the country and outplayed them but they lost they beat them in every category except the score and uh you know Arkansas's got to figure out a way Taylor makes a lot of good things happen with his arm and legs but he's got to eliminate the mistakes the turnovers uh, he threw another one when he was down the ground. I mean, it could have been, yeah. could have been intentional grounding. It could have been it picked off. I mean, you, you know, sometimes you just got to take the sack. And, go out. and hey, it's hard to be critical of a kid who's trying to make something happen. I get that. And then on the the one thing that bothers me, and I, you know, I'm going to ask Sam tomorrow. And I haven't gone through the transcript. I was there, but I didn't go down yesterday. But on the punts, is there some way? That Isaiah can alert the the people block. Is there some way the people blocking for him can be alerted that he's calling a fair catch? Because what they're doing, they're moving back and they're getting blocked into him. And that's one reason I think he fumbled. I mean, and that happened another time or two. I mean, it's so crowded when he catches the ball on a fair catch. Maybe he needs to scream fair catch. You know, and those guys just get out of the way. I mean, there's no need to block for a fair catch. And there's got to be some way to alert those kids. That, blocking for him that that uh you know don't do that because that's that was a costly turnover and it but it was so arkansas you know we've come to expect this the last couple of years they find they find ways to lose close games and i had just told jerry and jason in the press box i said i hope isaiah doesn't fumble this before the punt and guess what it It was your fault i failed it coming man i failed it come it's just so arkansas but uh this is a good football team. I, I stand by what I've said about being a good football team, but they're not good enough to make mistakes and come out and beat another team. They're just not. And they've got to figure out a way. Taylor and Jaquindon have got to play with them themselves because they're really good players, man. I think Jaquindon is better than Holly, Gar- Holly Gordon. Yeah. He certainly was yesterday. And yeah. I thought that going in. And uh, But, uh, you know, those fumbles and those turnovers just got to be eliminated, you know. And uh, if they – if and, you know, We'll see. We'll see what happens with the kicker battle because I know in the last yes. scrim, second scrimmage, Jacob, they, the other guy was like four or four, and Ramsey didn't make any. And we yeah. asked Sam, and Sam said he was hurt. But I was really surprised last Thursday, Thursday before last when he trotted out Ramsey on the at the UAPB game, and I asked him this past Monday, "Is Ramsey for sure your kicker?" And he says to be determined, but I, I don't know. We'll have to see. But I know they're in a bind there because Cam was. They thought Cam was coming back, yeah. and they commitment from another kicker, high school kid. 
but they've got to get that figured out. Because I know people talk about you don't want three, you want touchdowns. Yeah, but you don't want zero. That's what you don't yeah. want. Yeah, you got to get some. You prefer touchdowns, but you sure don't want to get down there and come up empty-handed. And you probably, if, if they'd hit their field goals, the makeable field goals, they'd have won that game. And I, so I really can't question – I don't know about you, Jacob, but I can't question Sam a whole lot when it was fourth and four or fourth and five for going for it instead of kicking a field – trying to kick a field goal there because it was just uncertain if that kid would – if well, and what amazes me, Kyle Ramsey was – didn't miss a single field goal 150 yards last year. He was perfect between 40 and 49. Missed one field goal all year. I – I don't know what's happened because even the ones he makes, it, that one he made was just barely over the bars. And I I don't know. They've got to get a lot of things figured out. And, and, and these are winnable games. The rest of these games in September are all very winnable. You know, Notre Dame went to A&M and won. And Notre Dame got oh, beat I know. Northern Illinois. Auburn got beat at home by Cal. I, these are winnable games. UAB got beat 32 to 6, I believe it was, yesterday by Lucy under Monroe. So, you know, so UAB's one, one and one. They beat Alcorn State. So, yeah, I mean, but these are all winnable games, but you can't keep giving them away, Jacob. And that's, I feel like that's what Arkansas did. No one will convince me that Oklahoma State's a better football team than Arkansas. I don't believe that for one. Yeah, they won, but the best team doesn't always win. Yeah, that's what made it so frustrating is, is you go on the road to the number 16 team in the entire country and you are the bigger team, you're the faster team, and you are the better team in every single possible way, every facet exactly. in that way, except for self-inflicted mistakes. I'm going to ask you for the floor here for you got about 10 minutes because I went back through, I skipped through the game. From what I remember, and I wrote down every single self-inflicted mistake for Arkansas. You got about 10 minutes. You ready for this? It yeah. started on the first drive. Arkansas goes down to the OSU 27. It's third and three. Talon gets sacked, pushes him out of field goal range. Now, they had a great punt, set up the field position battle. You could say that right. was a net positive fine. The one-yard line, yeah. yeah. So then we skip forward, 14-0, mid-second quarter. Arkansas with a chance to push it to three possessions. Talon makes one of the best plays I've ever seen, rolls out, throws off one foot, falling out of bounds. Tyrone Broden drops a touchdown. Two plays later... Blackstock blows a block on the right side. Talon gets blown up, pick six. So just like that, now Arkansas is back. It's 21-7. Razorbacks respond. You're feeling good. Jaheim Singletary interception, 115 to go. You've got a chance to double dip here. You could push this to three possessions going yeah. into the half, and you get the ball coming out of halftime. Yeah. What do you do? You called it. Talon rolls out, doesn't throw the ball out, takes a brutal sack. Bobby, rightfully so, sits on the ball. We go to half. It's 21 to 7. Now you get the ball back. You got a chance still. We're going to push this to three possessions, punish them on the road. We're not close to getting done. You punt on the first drive of the third quarter. Oklahoma State comes down, gives you a gift. Block below the waist. It's 21 to 10. So you're still feeling good. Jaquindon Jackson drops a pitch play, fumble. You put the ball on the ground, self inflicted. There was nobody within three yards of him. Oklahoma right State gets the ball back. Drives down the field, another field goal. 21-13, great response by the offense. You drive down the field, second and nine on the OSU 19. Low snap, Talon takes his eyes off the ball, drops it. Third and 14, first missed field goal of the game. So now you're saying, all right, it's 21-13. But hey, still feeling good. You get the ball back, you come down. Next possession, you stop OSU. You're feeling good. Defense puts together a great performance. Punt goes up. Isaiah Satania fumbles the punt. OSU scores a touchdown. 21-21. We're not close to none. I got I got notes here. We're not on the All second right, page, Otis. I'm just going to keep you're rolling you're and keep with that. It was self-inflicted, man. Self-inflicted. 21-21. to 21. OSU gets the ball back. They run the trick play. The fullback, wide open. Wide open. Nobody within 30 yards of him. Runs down 28-21. Arkansas comes back. It's 28-28. to 28. You think, all right, everything's good. 28 to 28, OSU gets the ball back. You're asking Alan Bowman, who struggled the whole entire game to beat you. You give him 30 yards of defensive pass interference calls to get Oklahoma State down the field. He finally Same makes player. a good throw. He celebrates. And this is where it gets really bad for me, quite frankly. So now Bowman stops the clock with 140 to go, Otis. And we call timeout. Arkansas calls timeout. Instead of saving the three timeouts, meaning you get the ball back with 50 seconds instead of 140 on the clock. The clock was already stopped. I don't know. Somebody was out of possession or out of position or whatever. 
You stop the clock. So now you get the ball back with 45 seconds. Then, two-minute situation, it's great that Arkansas gets down, ties the game with a field goal, but oh, is they blew 10 to 15 seconds not knowing just to clock the ball when they're going up to the line of scrimmage. So that's 10 to 15 seconds there. Overtime rolls around. You still force overtime through all of this against the number 16 team on the road. You get another missed field goal in the first overtime. And then in the second overtime, that's when it all goes to you know what. Personal foul, right? I mean, we know Danico Slaughter and Xavier Sori, the whistle blows. You throw them down. There could have been three or four more other calls there. It was bad the whole game. And then in the overtime, people forget Rodney Hill wide open on that wheel route. Talon just missed him. Clean pocket, wide open. That would have been a touchdown. And then fourth and one. I know Jaquin and Jackson is he's cramping and all the above, but you run a play, power set, six offensive linemen, two tight ends in. And I get it. I get Rodney Hill's your backup. I get they feel really good about him. He's also 5'10, 186, and they run a play to the weak side and he gets stuffed. So all of that. You take maybe two of those, and they win the game against the number 16 team in the entire country. I had to get on my soapbox. I'm sorry, Otis. We were talking on the sideline. The analogy we used is, you know, Pistol Pete, the Oklahoma State mascot? He's rolling around, big, big hat and all that stuff. We said Arkansas walked up to Pistol Pete, said, can I borrow that pistol, and can I shoot myself in the foot with it? Right. Because that's what Arkansas did. It was ridiculous. It was flat-out ridiculous. And, I, like, I get it. You feel positive because this team is different, but you cannot outgain Oklahoma State by 300 yards and lose that game like that. I got two pages of self-inflicted mistakes. I probably missed some. So that's my soapbox <laughs> well, rant. I'll give it back to you. It was ridiculous. No, you're right on all accounts. And, and that was exactly my feeling, Jay. It wasn't so much they lost. I mean, if Arkansas oh my had got the number 16 team in the country and got their rears kicked, you know, you could live with that. I mean, you would say, hey, they won. But just the way they lost, and oh. despite all that, it still took two overtimes to beat them, yeah. you know, despite all the gifts. I mean, they lined up Christmas, Christmas presents under Oklahoma State's tree and stacked them to the waist. It's, and, it's, you know, charity, all the way around the tree stacked up the waist. And still, you know, I mean, they gifted a lot of stuff. You had it two sheets of paper. I mean, and as you said, you probably missed some. I mean, yeah, Rodney Hill. I mean, <laughs> Taylor had him wide open. Wide there. open. Threw that ball down. I don't. But you know, they've got to get all this figured out. And when they do, they could be. I mean, look, they can beat. They can beat any team on their schedule. Yeah. But 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 if you do that, you may be lucky to beat any team. You just can't. <laughs> they're not so good. I've said all along. I think it's a good team, but they're not so good that they can do that and win games. They are very fortunate that they're it. They only lost by one touchdown in two in two overtime because the way they played yesterday, had they not been a better team, they would have got blown out of the stadium. Oh right, my Jake? goodness! It's all those gifts, but it, and it's like I said, you can't really point a finger and, and say, "Well, Sam Pippen blew it." I don't, I don't see it that way. <laughs> but but he's the head coach, and he can't keep losing these one possession games. It's not going to work because you you've got to figure out a way to win though to win your share of them. You're not going to win them all, but you got to figure out a way to win your share of them. And they're not winning their share of them. And this is the third year in a row this is going on, Jacob. And uh, they've got a tough schedule, but they've got a manageable schedule. But if you don't beat, if you don't, if you beat yourself, it's going to be a long season. If you come out and clean all this stuff up. I don't know if they can or not, but if they do, they're going. They're a dangerous team. If a team has mm -hmm. to work beat Arkansas, it's going to be tough. Yeah. But Oklahoma State got a lot of gifts to them yesterday. Oh and, uh, goodness! And uh, Arkansas is a better team than Oklahoma State. But but you know all that and a, <laughs> a couple of bucks will get you a coke over at the restaurant. You know, <laughs> my, you know my opinion: a couple of dollars will get you a coke. But I don't know, Jacob. It's just frustrating. Because you see a better team on the field, and 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 in, you're one and one when you should be two and zero. Oh, because they they have a chance to do pretty good this season, but yeah. they've got work to do to clean stuff up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this they've is where yeah. they've got to find a kicker. If, yeah, I don't know what they and they may not have one. They may not have one. And they went out and got two guys out of the portal, Ramsey and and the other, and, and both of them had great stats at where they were at last year, but. Yeah. Uh, but one of them's got to come through. I mean, it's the SEC, and uh, kicking is kicking, and they've got to figure it out because you 
I know I, I hear people all the time, you, know, you don't want to settle for a field goal. Well, you don't, but you drove out three the other day. Arkansas got three earlier in the game. Yeah. The game would have gone to overtime. So that's my point. Three is better than nothing. Seven is better than three. Three is better than nothing. It's that simple. It's just simple math, Jacob. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, we were talking after the game, and I think Alyssa said it best. She said, you know, after the season that they played last year and you bring in all the new pieces, you've got 9, 10, 11 new guys starting on both sides of the ball, right? She said this team has to learn how to win football games. It sounds stupid. It sounds simple, but it's the truth. It's just this no, team exactly. hasn't been in a position like that. It's a different brand of football to close a game like that, and they have to figure it out. Well, okay, at the end of the game, you've got, okay, in this game, you've got to either figure out how to win it or you've got to figure out or yeah. you've got to figure out how not to lose it. And so far, they haven't done that. They this team is 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 it's got to figure out how to win these. It goes back to what I said about these close games. I'm not putting it on any one player, one coach, or anything. But ultimately, Sam Pittman's the head coach, so he's got to figure yeah. this out. I'm not blaming Sam for yesterday. I'm not. But it doesn't matter. He's the head coach. They're one and one, and and he's they've got to instill a winning. How to win in there? You're right. Let's just right. I mean, and I said the same. I said the same thing on the way home. I said they find ways to lose games. When was the last time we say, man, they found a way to win yeah. that game? <laughs> I mean, it's the same thing, Jacob. You 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 either find a way to win it or you find a way to lose it. And if you don't find a way to win it eventually, you're going to be out of the game. So, I mean, that's what Arkansas has got to do. You've got Bobby Petrini. You've got Travis Williams. You've got good coordinators. But you've got – and you've got Sam. You've got all these assistants. You've got Taylor Green. I think he's a very good quarterback. But he's, he made some mistakes at Boise last year. When he did make mistakes, we saw what happened in the conference championship game yeah. when he killed UNLV, a good team. Yeah. And so, you know, similar players, similar players to what he had at, at uh, Boise State. And he, mur I mean, he just wiped them out. You know, he, he's very good, but he's big and he's fast. And I think DeQuinton, I personally think DeQuinton is better than Ollie Gordon or Rocky Sanders, but he's got to protect the football. Protect I mean, the, the pit, Taylor, he right in the hands. And I, I, yeah, and I felt like one time, Taylor, Taylor and dropped that style. I felt like he was trying to run before he caught it. You know, he took that lost his concentration for just a second. Those two guys are really talented, but they're also the two that tend have a tendency to scare you at times because they're careless at times with the ball or whatever. I don't know if that's fair to say they're careless with the ball, but they've got to clean it up. And if those two can eliminate their match, because that's two guys, that's two guys that's going to have the ball as much as anybody mm -hmm. other than the center. They're going to have the ball in their hands. If Arkansas is going to win, it's going to be in Taylor Green and and uh, Quentin Jackson, Andrew Armstrong, Luke Hazard, those guys, yeah. But those those two right there are the two that's going to have the ball probably more than anybody, and they've got to make they've got to make winning plays. And if they do that, this team's still going to be fine. I'm convinced of that, but uh, but I'm not convinced they'll clean it up. We've got to see it because they – like I said, Jacob, we you know, we were talking on the way home from from Stillwater. I said, when was the last time Arkansas? You you looked up after the game. You talked to your friend or your coworker, and you said, "Man, Arkansas found a way to win that game." It just it hasn't said that, and that's what's got to be said. And if they do, it's going to be a good. Hey, I'm standing by why I said this yeah. is a good football team. I'm not backing down a bit on that. In fact, in fact, yesterday probably made me feel more confident that they're good, Jacob. Yeah, because I mean. Like I said earlier in the week, they could, I picked them to win, but they could have gone over there and lost. But if you'd have told me they were the yardage and all the stats, if you'd gave me all those stats except the turnover during the week, I might have said three or four touchdowns. <laughs> yes. And so, yeah, it's crazy. This Saturday, I know they're playing UAB. That doesn't matter. They've got to start cleaning the stuff up. Go out there on the field, whether it's in whether it's Razorback Stadium, Auburn, Stillwater, uh, Arlington, and say, we're going out here, we're going to win this game today, and believe it, and then do it, execute it. If they do that, people are going to be happy at the end of the season with this team. But this loss is still going to come back. It yeah. don't matter if you go 8-4, 9-3, 7-5, you're going to look back at the end of the year and say, boy, that loss bit them in the butt. It's going to bite them in the rear somehow. It will. I mean, more ways than one, but, I mean, you're going to look back and still think at the end of the year, that is one they should have had in this column. Yeah. It might be the difference between going to a minor bowl and going to, to a good bowl somewhere. Yeah. 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 
No, and this is where all the all the coach speak you always hear re really comes in here. Because again, the reason why it was so frustrating is because you saw the glimpses of how good this team can be. Yeah. So this is when you hear those football cliches, you got to flush this one. You got to learn from this one. That's where this stuff really comes in. Because you flush it, you learn from it. This could ultimately become an awesome positive. But if it's a sign of things to come outside of UAP and Louisiana Tech, you make the type of mistakes you made on Saturday, you're going to lose all the other games as well. And UAB is really the last opportunity because after that, SEC, the SEC slate starts. And as we know, it gets really tough for the Razorbacks. But hey, we got to yeah. talk some recruiting, maybe lower our blood pressure a little bit. And by lower ours, I mean mine. Lower the blood pressure a little bit. I know you want to talk about Colton Yarbrough, Grayson Wilson, as well as a couple of visitors for the Razorbacks coming up this weekend. Yeah. Colton will be at Gravit Friday night, Jacob, 7 o'clock. They play Gravit. Gravit is 2-0. and oh. They beat Jay 42-6, to six. Jay Oklahoma Saturday, Friday night. Durant's 0-2, oh but they've lost to Ada, and they've lost to Broken Bow, Oklahoma. If you're from that area, you know those are very uh, – Broken Bow's always got a good team. Uh, but Colton will be there – Committed to Arkansas, four-star, number one player in Oklahoma 2026. We've gone over that a million times. But, and he was on here. But yeah. hey, have a chance to go out there and watch him play Friday night. I'll be there. Uh, uh, Conway played Bentonville Friday night. Conway beat them, uh, beat them 55 to 21. Grayson was, uh, Grayson uh, passed for 200, or I'm sorry, 337 yards, four touchdowns, and rushed for 11 yards. He's a really good. good quarterback. Uh, yeah, they they won that game. Javon Javon Gilmore, the quarterback of South Carolina, who's committed to Arkansas, we've already also I mean had on here. They won. They're two and zero. Oh. Javon's having a good year, and uh, and uh, Kane Archer. They won. Uh, they beat uh, they beat uh, Northside like 50, 58 to nothing. The thing I look at when I look at Grayson Wilson, Javon Gilmore, and and Kane Archer. They have in six games, two each, three, three, two get six games, two each. They have no interceptions, Jacob. Take none of the, none of the three have an inter, have thrown an interception yet. That's impressive. Okay, and then for people asking, yeah, they'll be recruits Saturday. This first game, they well, no, I'm sorry, they did have recruits at Little Rock, but they couldn't yeah. talk. This is the game where they can talk to them. They can have them down. Uh, they'll get them, you know, take. Meet the coaches. This is a great opportunity for Arkansas to to make some inroads, especially with younger kids. Uh, talk to them, uh, let them see the product on the field. Hopefully, they can see a good product. But uh, you know, all's not lost with that loss. It seems like it, and it 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 it, 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 it it's a blood pressure razor. <laughs> but uh, but uh, Arkansas has got a chance to redeem itself this week and start with a uh, UAB and then. You know, they're going to go on the road for a couple of weeks before they get a tough Tennessee team here in Fayetteville. Yeah. Really Man, they look them. good yesterday. Oh, they look real good. I got home in time to see the uh, a little bit of the fourth quarter of that yeah. Colorado. And, but Tennessee looks really good. They really do. They beat a pretty good North Carolina State team like a drop. Yeah. Uh, but main thing is go out if you get a chance. If you're in the area Friday night and you're looking for something to do before Arkansas's game Saturday. Go out there, grab it, watch Coach and Yarper up play, and uh, I think you'll be impressed with what you see. I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited about it. I hope it's good weather. I haven't seen Dan's long-range <laughs> forecast. I've been coach, but I, I haven't seen anything. But uh, I was out of town Thursday and Tulsa Friday and Stillwater Saturday, so I've been all over the place. Uh, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, – I'm hoping Dan has – good. Dan Scoff has some good news for us on the weather. and But whatever. Good weather, bad weather, whatever. At least I, I was shocked at the weather yesterday and, yeah. and still walked. It was not. You know, now, I'm in press box, but John got suburbed on the side. Of, it, it was warm, but it wasn't anything like I thought it might be. Or, you know, about three weeks ago, I asked Sam, are you ready? For the, you know, yeah. like you got the, hey, one thing real quick before we go, Jack, let yeah. me say this. Arkansas has got to figure out a way to get some pressure on the other quarterback. Yeah. Too. Man, they did not even – they did not touch him. any pressure on Bowman. And, I mean – that's got to change. I mean, I don't know if they've got to get some blitzes or what they're what's going on, but they've got to figure out a way to get some pressure on each other. Quarterback, man, Bowman's got all night back there. And that's one thing 
that uh, you don't really take into account the UAPB game because they were just so mm-hmm. overmatched. Man, yeah. that game here. That was one. That was another disappointment of mine was the fact that Arkansas could not get any pressure on Bowman. I mean, none. Yeah. Yeah, I said the same thing. It was uh, they yeah. did such a good job against the run, especially in the front four. You know what I mean, containing Gordon. But they couldn't. They couldn't touch Bowman. I mean, he was dropping back, and he had a free pocket to go. But regardless, a uh, get right opportunity for the Razorbacks coming up against UAB on Saturday. But that's all the time we have on this week's Arkansas football recruiting report. That's Otis Kirk. I'm Jacob Morris. We'll talk to you next week.